Now, Catherine, what can you tell me about Kira's law, what it proposes, and, and what the progress of those proposed changes is? The main element of Kira's law um, is that it's proposing that judges receive domestic violence training. And um, it surprises a lot of people to know that judges don't um, get a ton of training uh, when they're appointed. They, they'll have some training about like, you know, how to make decisions and how to hear evidence and how to really be efficient when writing their judgments. But those are more like process things. They don't get a ton of other types of training. And so Kira's law proposes that judges do receive domestic violence training so that they can better um, understand uh, what red flags are and what to look out for and why it's really dangerous to have a child in the custody of someone who's exhibiting behavior consistent with um, a murderer or someone who will commit a murder or someone who, who will commit abuse. And uh, that's the, the primary goal of Kira's Law. It's currently working its way through the parliamentary system. It will be going to committee, uh, a committee for debate. Um, and uh, the hope, of course, is that this passes and it will, I think, absolutely make a difference in the lives of children. It will save children's lives if judges have this training. Could you, could you tell us what, the tra what this training would actually look like? I, I know you mentioned some red flags. Maybe you could tell our viewers what some of those red flags are. So uh, one of the issues in, in family law, and I'm not a family lawyer, but I have a lot of family lawyer friends, and my dad was actually a family lawyer for many years. So I, I'm accustomed to, to looking at these types of cases. And one of the primary issues is that there's a really strong um, bias, of course, to maintaining um, a, a access a, that a child would have to a parent. And that exists even in cases where an individual has been abusive to, to their ex-partner. And um, what happens is in these cases, judges will hear all kinds of evidence about abuse, about abuse in the marital home, uh, you know, financial abuse, emotional abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, stalking, um, all kinds of horrible behavior. And they will uh, still grant custody and access to the person who's exhibiting this behavior because they'll say, well, you know, they, they weren't abusive to the child. That reasoning is the result of someone not being educated about um, the, the, the psychology and the behavior of abusers. And that if, and there's a whole body of evidence that shows that if someone has engaged in abusive conduct, they are highly likely to be abusive to the child, especially because the child becomes a pawn and a means for control. And um, people don't know these things unless they've, they've learned it. It's not something that you just pick up through osmosis and lawyers, lawyers don't pick this up. Judges will, you will not learn this unless you hear from the experts. And there's just so much, I think, um, bias and stereotyping that exists. And one thing I hear, Christine, uh, from a lot of women who talk to me, and this is something that I'm very concerned about, is that um, women are being told by family law mediators not to bring up abuse during their, uh, their court proceedings because there is a bias that exists in the family court system that people fabricate those allegations in order to get back at their exes and get what they want. And we get we end up with situations like what happened with Kira. You know, Justin, I, I, I wanna turn to you for the time we have left for this. Um, the Jewish community or the Jewish family community services um, had, had um, originally tasked this case file at some point to quite a junior person um, who, who also seemed to fail at recognizing the signs of abuse. Can, what can you tell us about that and how it fits into your case? I mean, at our discovery, which is going to come up in the fall, we're obviously going to probe into the education and training of these people. It, it seems to us there should have been people involved who had specific training in how to deal with individuals who they perceive will commit violent acts. They knew the whole history of this case. 
They knew that this fellow had abused his wife physically and sexually. They knew that he was engaged in improper conduct with the daughter. He wouldn't let her go home. He was being deceptive. He was deceiving right. the court. They knew, and that, that for us is key in this case.